Good morning. I'm Avery Bourne, State Representative for the 95th Legislative District. This morning, House Republicans filed House Resolution 153, opposing a graduated income tax in Illinois. Uh, this represents our caucus's unanimous opposition to Pritzker's unfair tax. Our current tax structure, our caucus believes, is one of Illinois' last competitive advantages that we have, and it provides inherent taxpayer protections, and it doesn't allow lawmakers to play with the rates. Um, and we've seen in states that have graduated income tax structures uh, that there is an imposed, um, an imposed tax burden on the middle class. But also, our current tax structure provides long-term stability, which we think is important uh, for the state. And it means that currently, lawmakers are accountable to every Illinoisan when we, they talk about an income tax increase. They don't get to carve out individual groups or be accountable only to individual groups. In his budget address, Pritzker stated that three quarters of the states with an income tax structure have graduated rates. However, what he failed to mention is that half of those states, or 17 of 34, with a graduated income tax structure, top out their top bracket at $60,000 a year for an individual, and that for six of those states, they have essentially a flat tax that has the top bracket at under the federal poverty level. These barely reach, uh, or these don't reach, Pritzker's definition of a fair tax, which only impacts uh, the wealthiest in our society. But instead, um, we've seen some states are moving to have more of a flat tax structure. Um, and the states that do have graduated tax structures do have an imposed burden on the middle class. Um, in fact, we've seen some states, including Mississippi, are moving away from their graduated tax structure and um, are phasing them out. Um, he also indicated uh, in his budget address, that we can implement tax rates that are lower than our neighbors of Iowa and Wisconsin. But what he fails to talk about is the overall tax burden that Illinoisans face compared to our Midwestern neighbors. Um, Illinois has the highest overall tax burden in the Midwest and the 11th highest in the nation, according to the Tax Foundation. As you all know, we have the second highest property tax rates. As stated in our resolution, we have one of the highest combined state and local sales taxes on top of all of the other taxes that Illinoisans face. Um, in order to be competitive, adding another tax increase or changing our structure to a graduated income tax structure will not make us competitive, period, especially when we've already been named one of the worst states for business by the chief executive magazine. Um, we've yet to see rates, as you all know. My guess is that's because Democrats know they can't pay for the billions of dollars of promised spending without hitting the middle class. That's where the money is. Uh, there simply aren't enough rich people in Illinois to pay for all of Pritzker's promises, and they know that. Um, in fact, the only rates we've seen under Representative Rob Martwick's plan last year would have taxed 77% of Illinoisans. That's not just uh, the wealthiest in our society. And that includes taxing at a higher rate people who are making roughly what a full-time minimum wage salary is in Illinois right now, um, which would be $17,300 a year. That means the average household income um, in the district that I represent, which is about $50,000, would see a tax increase of over $450 a year. This impacts, this will impact a majority of Illinoisans. $450 a year, that's a car payment, that's a student loan payment, that's a few weeks of groceries. This is going to impact a majority of Illinoisans, and that's why we're opposed. Um, on top of how this will impact families, we haven't talked about how it will impact small businesses. Many small business owners, um, many farmers that I know file taxes as an individual. This means that not only will this be an increased tax on them, but it will also hurt their employees. Um, we know Illinois is not uh, known for having a good business climate. Passing another increased tax on the small business owners and the employers in our state is the last thing that we need to do and it will make our state even less competitive. So while the Democrats in the General Assembly and Governor Pritzker continue to push policies that will increase taxes, not only income taxes, but other taxes as well, and will increase costs for businesses, a graduated income tax will be just one more barrier um, for small business owners doing business in the state of Illinois. Um, I want to quote our resolution. There is absolutely nothing fair in making average Illinoisans pay for the shortcomings of a legislature that has created a tax and spend paradigm that is unsustainable. There is no need for negotiation on this. Our caucus stands in unanimous opposition to any graduated income tax. With that, I will hand it over to my colleague, Grant Worley. Thank you, Representative Bourne. Um, Grant Worley, State Representative, 41st District, Naperville, Warrenville. 
Um, a graduated income tax is the wrong thing for Illinois. Um, it, it is human nature for us to look forward with optimism, whether we're individuals or businesses, that there are better days ahead. And a graduated income tax um, dampens that. It is the wrong thing at the wrong time. Um, we all want to prosper. We all want to be successful, whether it's personally, uh, financially, or in the business world. And this just puts yet another cloud over Illinois. Who wants to start a business here if it's just nothing but higher taxes without any of the reforms required? Who wants to raise a family here when it's just more taxes, more taxes, more taxes? Uh, the Republicans in the House are unanimous in our opposition to this. Um, and to be clear, this is a Democrat priority to raise taxes on everyone, whether it's an individual or a business. We heard um, uh, if you're an S-Corp um, business that this will directly impact you, and that doesn't matter if you're a farmer or a, an upstart trying to make things better for the future. This will negatively impact you. So the Democrats, this is their solution. No reforms, just more money for um, government that they continue to expand at record pace. Um, this is, it's an intellectually lazy solution because it does nothing on the reform side. It is simply, we're going to increase rates, we're going to demand more money and not change how we do uh, our core services here in the state of Illinois or how we deliver those core services to people that need them. Um, it is somewhat ironic that, a, that our governor, J.B. Pritzker, who could literally write a billion dollar check to the state tomorrow, wants to put a higher tax burden on the working class and the middle class in Illinois. Um, it, it is not lost upon us that his only solution is for the working class to pay more. So with that, we're uh, open to questions. Republicans are in the super minority. Uh, is this just a show of force, or I mean, ultimately, is this going to be up to the constituents uh, to you know get all this information and make that decision themselves? So, it, 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 uh, in order to change the state constitution, it will have to go to the voters. Um, this is the the start of our opposition to that. We are unified in that. This is this is not the solution that Illinois is looking forward or looking for. Um, and we look uh, we welcome the opportunity to take our our stance to the voters, and I think it will be well received. As I stated, we're already taxed pretty high in this state, and making it higher will not solve um, much of anything. Well, yeah, you're in the super minority, this is one of, this is the governor's like, top priority. It, something's going to happen, so wouldn't it be more beneficial for you guys to sit at the table to make sure that your interests are represented in the negotiated rates? Um, this is his priority, and it's a Democrat's priority. They can own whatever rates they want to put out there. Taxes are going up. That is on them. They will, they will carry that for the, for the generations to come or leave in the state of Illinois. So are you not going to sit at the table at all then? Are you saying you're not going to participate? I, it's, to, to me, I'm going to equate this to negotiating how I go out of business. Do I, do I want to be run out of business or do I want to fail on my own? And they're, they're, they're running people out of business here. This is, this is not the way a collaborative process is supposed to work. I'm, I'm more than happy to sit and talk about reforms and things we can do to, to make government more efficient and cost savings. But to simply say we're going to raise taxes is, as I said, intellectually lazy. Representative, you referenced S-Corps. Yes. Specifically, how will this hurt so S Corp's is, it's a pass-through entity. It's done on the individual side of things. So that individual uh, profitability means little. It is basically um, it, it will hit an individual directly on their income tax. Where if you do it as a C corp, you're a standalone entity. It makes it's a little bit of distinction. So I guarantee you that you will see a decline in S corp startups and more C corp startups. It's just from a, from a mathematical bookkeeping accounting standpoint, uh, S corps will be massively punished in the state of Illinois under an increased uh, income tax. Well, I can't imagine all Democrats support the graduated income tax. Uh, maybe you could recruit some. Maybe you could bring them here to the Blue Room. I, I welcome that opportunity, and uh, the outreach begins today. How do you guys feel about, I mean, there's two dark money groups, of course, the I, big, Think Big Illinois, that's the one. Think I, Big Taxes Illinois? <laughs> they're, they are voluntarily uh, disclosing their donors. Ideas Illinois um, is a classic 501c4. Uh, how do you guys feel about dark money groups on both sides of this issue? Is so, I'm, to be honest with you, I'm not familiar with either of those organizations other than some recent ads. I think I saw yesterday one on CapFax. Um, I, you know, dark money has its uh, its downsides in politics, but I specifically, I, I'm not here to address either of those two. With, with the dark money involvement, we're going to be inundated. Voters are going to be inundated with messaging over the next year, if not longer, leading up to uh, the November 2020 election. 
what are you guys going to do to combat that as lawmakers? Uh, I mean, do we look at other examples of other states or where I think like New York, for instance, had uh, some revenue uh, shortfalls and they have a similar type of... Um, so uh, I personally think the best way to get somebody's undivided attention when you're talking finances is to show them how it directly will impact them. So we are here to also ask that Governor Pritzker release your rates. Let the people know what the tax structure is going to look like. And then we can have an, uh, an informed conversation on what the direct impact is to the, the mom and pop in Taylorville, Illinois, uh, you know, a restaurant in Taylorville, Illinois, what that means to them, or the, the business owner in Rockford. We need some actual data to go off of. To just say we need more money, it's not a solution. It's so would releasing the rates change your position? I'm sorry? Would releasing the rates change your position? I, I look forward to working more on the reform side and making this state a, a pro-business, pro-growth economy instead of just relying on taxpayer dollars to fund bigger and bigger government. Um, I'll sit at the negotiating table and talk about how we grow our economy and not how we grow uh, taxes. Well, you folks like the flat tax the way, you know, the 4.9 percent. You like that the way it is? Is that an appropriate flat rate for all of us? Um, I know I personally would like to see it lower. <laughs> the Simon Institute has repeatedly polled the graduated income tax question, and in the most recent one, even among self-identified conservative and Republican voters, it was 56 to 40 favor higher rates on the wealthy, lower rates on, on lower income. People. Show your work. Your Governor Pritzker, is. show your work. This is the Simon Institute. I, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, if the governor wants to institute a graduated income tax, uh, we need to see some data. Okay, so this is data from a nonpartisan Southern Illinois University poll, 55 to 40. Republican and conservative voters say they support it. I'm just, can you square your caucus unified position with the will of the voters? Uh, I'm sorry? Uh, Keith Wheeler, 50th District, uh, covering parts of Kane and Kendall counties. Uh, two reflections on what you just brought up there. One, that 56% number doesn't reach the threshold of 60% to actually get this across the finish line. So there's a problem there. The second part of that is that I don't believe that that polling actually reflected any actual real rates, so no one could actually understand how it would affect them. If it were just a millionaire's tax, it was presented a couple years ago, that might be one thing. If it's going to hit everybody down to the 17,000 level, whole new poll. Whole new poll. You know, just to yeah. clarify, it was 72 to 24 on the overall statewide. I was just singling out conservative and Republican. Sure. At the outset, uh, Representative Bourne said that the flat income tax is one of our few things that we can carry the flag on. How about no tax on retirement? It seems like Illinois is hiding its uh, candle under a bushel, or as they say in some parts, a bushel. Uh, <laughs> you, you'd think that that would be publicized more. We don't tax retirement. Come to Illinois. And I'll bet even Democrats can agree on so, that. So, uh, Tim Butler, 87th District. Dave, let me address that to you. My sister just moved back from Olympia, Washington, after 20 years in Olympia, Washington. And when she moved back, she actually said to me, I'm not excited about moving back for my property taxes. The one thing that I'm excited about moving back for is the fact that you're not going to tax my retirement. I think you're right. I think we do have to promote that more. That, that's one of the, along with the flat tax, the fact that we don't tax retirement income is one of the true advantages we have in Illinois to try to attract people. And we need to keep that in place. Last question. I, the other constitutional amendments uh, that are going to be up for debate over the next year and a half or so, um, if this is one of them that Democrats are going to put on the ballot, what else do you guys want to see, uh, given the limitations that you can only have uh, three? So if we're going to open up the Constitution and look at uh, changing our flat tax rate, um, I'm of the belief that we should open the entire Constitution up, which includes the Pension Protection Clause. Um, there are the Civic Federation, many groups throughout the state understand that the only way we're going to get true ref pension reform is by uh, looking at that clause. So instead of just cherry picking certain parts on the Democratic side to, to look at the Constitution, open it all up. Let's have a th thorough and thoughtful conversation about the entire document. What, a con -con? I, I, I personally would support a con con. What, what about um, redistricting or any of the other issues that, are, that have been out there for years? I would also say I think almost everyone here in our entire caucus is on a resolution um, or a constitutional amendment for fair maps. I think that that's uh, something that has bipartisan support and certainly I think should take priority in the discussion over the graduated income tax. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Might want that. <laughs>